So these are all the not top laners that I didn't consider. These are the ones that I'm fringe on if I should include. And these are the ones I want to talk about for Tom Kench. And I kind of want to go through all these characters and see how they actually match up or how you're supposed to play the lane or if it's favored, if it's not, etc. So we're going to slowly go through them all and uh, we're going to see how it works for content. So hopefully this is interesting. So the very first one is Aatrox. Um, Aatrox is an interesting one. I think Aatrox, if I was just to make a tier list for top lane, he's at the top. He's with the trifecta of Camille, uh, Aatrox, and Darius. I think those are the three best top laners currently in the meta, uh, at least for solo queue. I think there's characters like Gangplank. Um, Gangplank's probably the only other one, really, I think, uh, that's like up there with like you can pick them in anything. They kind of just like hang out and do their own thing. Um, but Aatrox is definitely like the cream of the crop uh, for that. So I do think that this matchup is like enemy favored. Old matchup used to be like pretty even. You just had to time your eat for when his chains pulled you into the middle. Um, but now I think it's probably less favored because you can't really just use Qs like willy-nilly. You pretty often have to eat him like all the time. So you're not getting the same like control in the actual matchup. It's a matchup that I haven't played enough. Um, I should add like have not played enough. It's a matchup that I haven't played enough, but I played enough like in old the old matchup that I think I understand where this spray should fall. Akali's an interesting one. Uh when I used to play Top Tom Kench, she wasn't reworked yet, I don't think at the time. Um, but I've played against her once since, I believe. And it's annoying because she has her free trade patterns. Akali being able to um, duck in and out of stealth is always super annoying. But it's really not that bad of a matchup. She can't really ever kill you. Uh, it's really Tom favored for the most part. There's not too much you have to do. You don't have much kill pressure because she can usually just alt herself like out of the fight um, or stealth out or whatever. But when she is pushed up in a lane, you do have like kill pressure on her she can't really kill you you have tons of kill pressure on her uh top annie's kind of a gimmicky one she falls into the category of range top laners that you just kind of outrange you uh throughout the game um if you ignite yeah it's more even if you go ignite on aatrox um but i most of these matchups are like top flash tp i haven't played top uh uh, flash ignite holy shit my brain exploded there um into a lot of these but I, I i think i have an idea and i'll probably try to bring it up when i think ignite can bring it over like mordekaiser is one of the matchups that i really do think that ignite pushes it into a uh favorable matchup um for uh tom kench also let me put on this really quick just so it's maybe readable one second let me move this around a little bit. What I want to do? Uh, alt. Cool. That should be a little better. Anyways, moving on. Uh, so Annie. Annie is a gimmicky top laner where you can't really get on her. She kind of just pokes you and hangs out. Uh, it isn't Annie favored by any means. Um, I would say it's Tom favorite. It's just you don't have kill pressure. She's just gonna farm up. She's gonna become a nightmare. You're gonna become a nightmare, uh, and it's gonna be a little messy all over. Um, I don't think there's too much to talk about. I, I haven't played against the Top Annie in years, and I probably won't, I would assume. We literally have a user in our Discord whose name is Top Annie, or his name was Top Annie. So maybe if I played against him on OCE, I would know. But um, <laughs> I don't think it's going to be too worrisome now. Camille. Camille, I think, is the strongest top laner in the game. That being said, I do think the matchup is pretty even, maybe even Tom favored. I would say it's the closest one to being Tom favored, but even. I think her strength as a character allows her to um, become like potent late game, no matter how well you do into her. Even if you like 5-0 or in lane, she's still eventually going to be able to uh, outside lane you. Her Qs will do a thousand damage, tr uh, a thousand true damage. Um, and guess what? No matter what you build, will not stop that. So. Uh, she's going to dive your back lane. Uh, back lane. The only way you can really stop her in team fights is you have to eat your ally while she's in her alt animation. Because as soon as she slams down, you're knocked out of the fight. You can't get to your ally, and they die before you can get back in. So this matchup is really, really rough. Um, her trade patterns are really annoying. She has good poke. Her getaways are insane with her hook shot. Um, but your trades like aren't dog shit awful by any means. It's just hard, and she is just a better character. You are playing a, I don't know. B plus character at best playing Tom Kench. Um, so you do have to remember that these S tier characters will just beat you because they are fundamentally better characters. 
Um, Cho'Gath is an interesting one. Uh, I always put Cho'Gath at even usually, but I do think it is probably Tom favored overall. Like, it's definitely between these two. Uh, it's more the fact that you have tons of kill pressure on him throughout the entire game, but he has knock up, silence, scream, slows, whatever the fuck to stop you. And eventually he'll just have enough health that he can never die to you. Uh, late game, you can at least side lane versus him. It's just that uh, early game, he has so much utility to stop you from killing him. Uh, it's a little bit rough. There will be times where you'll have to flash a Q to get behind him to stun him and eat him. Uh, but it definitely should go in Tom favor. You're not going to get solo killed by his character. You, he's just very annoying, very tanky. And his sustain is like nonstop. Darius is going to be the first one that I'm going to put in. <sighs> it's between enemy wins hard and enemy favored. Um, he is a character that... If you fuck up at any point, it becomes an unwinnable hellhole that you can never turn around. But until that point, it is probably just slightly favored for him. Uh, but as soon as you fuck up once, if you fuck up level 1, if you fuck up level 6, if you fuck up level 11, he will solo kill you for the rest of the game. Um, I talked about t talked to Colton in his stream a couple nights ago about this matchup when he was trying to uh, learn it. And the main thing to note is that... Um, you have to uh, dodge inwards towards his Q, or else you're never going to dodge it. Once he has Stride Breaker, you will never dodge it no matter what. And uh, post 6, you have to shield his ultimate, and you have to kill him in a trade. If you don't kill him in a trade, his bleed will outdamage you. Your trades have to be a one-time trade where you kill him or he kills you. So, it is a messed up matchup. I'm going to put it enemy wins hard, just because I think fucking up once in a 20-something minute game... Uh, and throwing your everything you worked for is crazy sad. Also, he still can just like solo win fights late game, so it doesn't really matter how well you do into him. Mundo, uh, Mundo's just dog shit. I guess is like the way to put it. Uh, he has Q. The only way to not put this in like Tom Kench just have this being a super favorable matchup for Tom Kench is the fact that Mundo can just sit back and farm with his Q for thirty minutes if he wants. Um, but he's never going to be able to kill you. You'll always be able to kill him. You build early Bramble Vest versus him. You take Ignite if you really need it. Um, it's it's a pretty easy lane. Uh, I don't think there's too much to say. Just fight him. He can't push up to minions. He has health as a resource. It's bad. Uh, Echo. Echo Top isn't something you play against very much. I think it's like probably Tom Kench favored. Uh, his stun is a little bit annoying. The shield he gets from it. Usually you can just tank stuff like that. He doesn't have enough damage overall. Post 6, he becomes like kind of in the slightly unkillable tier because he gets health regen from his ult, a shield from his W, uh, infinite movement speed from his passive. It just kind of goes on. But until that point, uh, you can just fight him. He is a character that doesn't have much damage early, uh, not even close to Tom Kench. Fiora is the matchup I literally just played on stream uh, versus a probably Platinum 2-ish Fiora player, Platinum 1. Uh, I kind of got trashed that lane. Uh, well, maybe not trashed, but I died to her twice, I think, in lane. It is a little bit volatile. She can uh, parry your Q. She can parry your uh, Munch. Uh, and her ultimate does percentage health damage, which you are a health tank at the end of the day. Uh, I was trying to tell my stream that when Fiora puts her ult on you, this is for any character that has the potential to fight her. Uh, when she puts her ult on you, just stand up against a wall and she can't proc that vital, and you can just fight her. So she'll, she won't get the healing from her ult, which like really slows down uh, the power of that ultimate. Uh, I do think it's pretty even for the most part. I did fuck it up. Uh, it's like a little bit volatile. If you start killing her, she can never come back. If she starts killing you, it's rough, but you're she's not going to solo win the game for her team by any means. It's not like a Darius when you fuck up. Uh, Galio. Galio's Tom favored. He's just a slow, shitty character, I think, right now. Uh, he does have a semi-global ult. He's probably an, a character that's very similar to Tom Kench in the, in the way he functions. His damage reduction from his E, uh, my damage reduction from my, or is his W, my damage reduction from my E. Our ults are similar. Uh, we have a kind of a poke Q ability. Uh, he's just worse, though, I think. I really don't think there's too much to say about it. Um, Gangplank. Gangplank is a good one. Gangplank used to be the most one a 0 to 100 matchup, depending on the skill and knowledge of the Gangplank. I'm not sure how that is now. I haven't played against Gangplank yet. Oh, so I played against, I think, one, and I it was all right, but he was a Diamond 1 player. Um, this matchup used to be determined on if the Gangplank knew that he could cleanse out of your munch because it's a suppression. And a lot of people don't know that Gangplank's uh, orange is clear, uh, clear suppressions. So if he knows that he can clear your munch, 
then you can never use that ability versus him unless his uh, uh, oranges are down. So that means you're kind of just like stuck to your Q ability and spitting minions at him, which really weakens your power. Uh, at the end of the day, even if he is losing lane, he can just sit back and farm and he will become a stronger character. He is a hyper carry late game character. You are not. Um, so Gangplank is definitely uh, slightly favored f for him. Uh, you do have kill pressure on him, but with oranges and stuff, he should just he should never die to you if he's a good player and if he understands basic matchup knowledge. Um, Garen is Tom favored. Once again, he's like a weaker Darius. His regen does become annoying. His ult does become annoying. His E damage is annoying, um, but he's a season one character who just gets trampled on by uh, the power of Tom Kench's early game. Just fight him. Just walk up auto him a bunch. Uh, make sure you um, save your E for his ultimate, or if he hasn't used his Q yet, use it when he's about to Q you into ultimate, if you are like in range of that, because he can silence you and so you don't use your ultimate, or you don't use your shield before his ultimate. So those are the only gimmicks to like watch out for. Uh, I really need to move chat. Hold on. Um, that's actually, it's not too bad. It's just like a little bit small. Fine. Hopefully. Anyways. Uh, can I ask what the biggest pros are about picking up the Kench, Kench top? What does he excel at? He excels at just uh, winning lane is like the main thing. If you're playing top lane, top lane, the main thing right now, so it's not a carry lane. You don't 1v9 games as top with any of these characters. Even like the cream of the crop characters like uh, Camille, Aatrox, Darius, you don't just 1v9 games. So if you can manage to survive lane or win lane and just put pressure on that side of the map or even just not lose lane, um, you're kind of just giving your team this like extra pressure i guess uh not inting is huge uh that's why i think characters like shen are really really strong because they play to this more team uh play style tom kench also plays to that uh team play style so if you, if you can't lose lane tom kench is very hard to lose lane on then you can kind of consistently uh have strong side top side i guess is the way i would look at it if that makes sense it's a little bit like long-winded um but the main point is that he wins every lane for the most part um, and therefore you can kind of consistently just roll that side of the map, even though you don't really matter as much. It's better than, uh, trying to play a carry and not being able to carry in this meta, I guess, if that makes sense. Um, Nar is annoying as fuck. Uh, it is an even matching up at, at the end of the day. Uh, he is a ranged character, so he goes into this, like, fuck ranged characters, um, area. But when he turns into Mega Nar, he really can't do much versus you. Even when he's Mini Nar. Uh, he doesn't do too much. He's just annoying because he has hop, he has slows, he has uh, movement speed buffs, uh, and he gets like some CC when he turns into Meganar. But it's, he's never going to solo kill you. You can solo kill him if he ever fucks up. If he ever fucks up a hop, you just solo kill him like easy peasy. Um, but it's not too bad. Uh, holy shit, there's a lot of characters. <laughs> Let me grab a, a drink of water really quick. next next we have gragas um i haven't played against enough gragas i'm honestly gonna put him in this tier i'm assuming it's a favored matchup for tom kench uh his combo is literally just uh q into e into like auto and then you kind of run away and i don't think that's nearly enough damage to kind of fuck up tom kench the one downside of this matchup i would assume is that you don't really have time to use your shield during the um trades um but if he if he, like, ease in, you can probably get a Q off and just chase him down and run him down, I would assume. But I really don't have enough knowledge to talk about that matchup. Um, Hecarim used to be enemy favored, for sure. Uh, I don't know how he currently is top lane. He's only being played jungle, which is very strange, because when he is strong, he's always almost a better top laner than a jungler. Maybe not always, but he always feels like a very potent top laner when he is a strong jungler. Um, so I'm not sure why he's not playing played top right now, but it used to be enemy favored. Uh, I don't know how it is now. It's probably closer to even. Uh, it's more the fact that his healing and his consistent damage output was always uh, a little bit too much for you. Um, and then obviously his ultimate is like just you can't ever catch him. He just gets away for free. It's like a Malphite, right? If you try to kill a Malphite, he ults out at the end of the trade. I'll put it in Pim and Even though. Uh, Heimerdinger. Uh, this matchup is... Mm. So it's weird. Heimerdinger is one of those where it is enemy favorite in lane because Heimerdinger never lets you get past turrets. Uh, your eat doesn't really do too much. You can reposition his turrets, but you're using 100 mana a time to uh, spit out one turret. Um, when you get on him, yeah, you kill him. 
because uh, you can shield his damage, eat it all, and then actually still have enough health to kill him. But uh, your character is infinitely better than hybrid out of uh, out of lane. So like it's one of those matchups where typically if you don't solo kill the enemy laner a couple times, you're behind. Uh, but if Heimerdinger, if you don't kill Heimerdinger, it doesn't really matter. His character is shit, and it doesn't really do much in team fights. Like Heimerdinger really only provides t in team fights uh, when he throws his big concussive grenade and it bounces and stuns a bunch of people. But every character in the game like has something better to provide. Like Seraphine's ult is an infinitely better version of that. It's a faster moving, longer range, wider version of Heimer's stun that charms them instead of stunning them. And I think for longer. So he really doesn't provide too much, I guess, to the game is the way I would look at that. Alawi is fucking cancer. Uh, I actually don't know if I want to put it as enemy favored because you can win this. It is a skill matchup. Uh, I'm notoriously bad at dodging skill shots from Alawi, her tentacles and stuff. Um, but this matchup goes level one, you try to kill her. Level two, you try to kill her. Level three, you try to kill her. And after that, she just uses E. And if she hits it, you lose the trade. And if you dodge it, she plays really safe for 15 seconds until it's off cooldown. Uh, so this lane just becomes super cancer. Uh, I, I honestly probably will move it to even because you do have stuff that kind of uh, fucks up Alawi more than other characters. For example, when she does alt in a fight, your goal is to not run away. Usually you want to run away from Alawi alt, but your goal is to auto her three times and eat her so she can't slam your team as much. Because when you're eating her, she can't use W and her ultimate will expire. This only works later in the game when you have enough health to tank her ultimate because early you'll probably get hit by her tentacles twice before you get to eat her uh, and that's more than enough damage to actually kill you but late game you can spend the time autoing her three times and eating her and then you kind of just negate her entire character because her character really does suck without her ultimate the fights need to be centered around her and if you can eat her out of her own uh, i guess arena then uh, the fight really isn't too too bad anyways Next is Irelia. Uh, this is a Tom Kench favored matchup. Uh, it might even be like a hard favored matchup, but uh, I think it's like pretty close. Like I, I think if I'm gonna be more realistic, this one's probably a Tom hard favored, and this one's like closer to um, even. Uh, Irelia is annoying because she has infinite healing. Uh, she's one of those characters that I hate very much. That is a top laner, top laning, uh, uh, self healing character. Uh, it's not that bad in this matchup though because. Yeah, she can jump through a ton of things and then jump on you with full passive, but her full passive stacks is still less damage than your basic autos. Your basic autos level 1 do like 80-something damage because of your passive, uh, and that just simply outtrades her. She has to hit like crazy stuns into crazy jumps and has to take multiple trades in order to actually finish you off ever. Cool. Um, good night, Rob. Take, take care. Uh, Ivern. I haven't played against Ivern. Uh, I do think I do know he's a very good top laner right now. I think he's only uh, good right now because of the uh, what's it called Moonstaff, whatever Groomstone meta. But uh, I do think he is a character that probably is annoying as fuck. But it's still Tom favored. He has zero kill pressure on you. He's just a character that plays throughout the game to get to the point where he can buff his teammates. Right? He, you're not playing. You're not playing Ivern to solo carry a game. You're playing Ivern to get support items earlier than if you would be playing support um, or jungle or whatever the fuck. So uh, I think I'm going to put him here, but I'm assuming it's probably falls somewhere in here. Um, Jax is Tom favored. It is an annoying matchup. Um, oh, take care, man. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm probably going to upload this to YouTube, so uh, we'll see if this actually goes live. Um, Jax is annoying. He can block autos. He can get away. He does become a hyper carry late game. But you can just tank his stuff. You can tank his auto attacks. You can tank his stun. You can tank anything. Uh, he really can't win trades until he gets a couple items, maybe two or three items into his build. So split pushing late game versus Jax can be scary. Um, you can like just set under towers and he can never push them versus you. He can't just dive you like other top laners who lose to him. Um, but he is a character that you can simply abuse early. So I do think it is slightly Tom favored. Um, Jace. Jace is somewhere between even Tom favored, probably Tom favored. Uh, his annoying part is the fact that he's a ranged character. What a surprise. And the other annoying part is that when he's in hammer form, he does have a knockback. That being said, your main trade pattern on Jace is when he goes for his shock blast Q into switch form into uh, Q 
cue onto you knock you away is you have to hit a cue while he's like coming on to you when he's coming on to you and you hit a cue he won't have the movement speed to run away from you after his knockback you can simply follow him and cue him and cue him and cue him and cue him and kill him uh and then he won't have abilities to chase you down so it's a, it's a pretty straightforward matchup uh karma is enemy favored uh it's one of those annoying mage matchups she's a ranged mage with uh so much healing and shielding that you can never get on her i don't think she's very good top lane now you should never have to play against top karma uh but when you do you should be aware that uh she probably will just sauce you around because you have zero kill pressure versus her and her whole goal again once again is to just get out of laning phase and become this unkillable tank supporting fiend uh so just watch out for that um Kassadin, uh i think it's just dog shit just don't play it uh he's a melee character he's a melee mage just kill him. Kill him 700 times. Make Kill him enough times that he doesn't get to late game to scale. Um, Kale, I don't know. So Kale's one of those characters, she's always known for being a character that has a weak early game. Um, and you're supposed to be able to abuse Kale 1 through 6. I don't think she's as, as abusable 1 through 6 as other, other people think. Uh, she's pretty safe. She does, like, not bad damage. And hitting 6 isn't very hard in the game. You hit 6, what, like, 10 minutes into the game? If that. Probably before that. Um, and I, I think she hits that too early to, like, really abuse. I would say it's slightly Tom favored. Um, but she... Post 6 is spooky. Uh, you have to get on her as a ranged character. Beat her down while she's kiting you. And then survive her ultimate. So I'm not sure exactly what's the best way to go about that is, um, but I don't think she can just solo kill you in lanes. It's more the fact that if you don't put enough pressure on her or stop her from farming enough, she will become a hyper carry. But I do think that puts her in the same category as like a Jax type character, and I don't think it's fair to rate them in different categories by any means. Um, Kennen, Kennen's, uh, it's Tom Kennen's favorite. Kennen just doesn't do anything early, especially current Kennen. This is on patch 11.2, by the way. Uh, he just doesn't do enough damage. He, he He's just going to farm. He's going to farm up and probably go AP and hope for a good team fight win. But he is a ranged character. You can't really get on him very easily. But he has zero kill pressure versus you. You just farm it out. You in fights, just make sure you focus him and you're fine. Cled is fucking cancer. Fuck Cled mains. Fuck Cled mains. I don't think Kled matchup is very winnable for most melee characters in the game. Yeah, that's all for that one, though. But uh, honestly, like, Kled is a character with two health bars. Uh, there's no way to beat him for most characters in the game, I guess. He drops Tower Rigger when he demounts. He remounts too easily. Uh, there is a build with him where you can get two demounts in a fight, which is stupid. Uh, or two remounts in a fight. Um so it, it it just isn't sorry it's not it's not two remounts it's the fact that you go sterix and sterix doesn't proc on you until you're back into melee the second time i think is the way it works um so he's like a three health bar tank i guess when you get sterix on him um so he's just unkillable like the reality is you just don't have kill pressure on a character like this he has too much survivability with multiple health bars and he does enough damage that he can match you in an extended trade don't play versus Clyde if you can um, Lissandra, I think Lissandra's just bad. Like, it, it probably is closer to even because she's a ranged mage and she will never die and will just farm up. But Lissandra's just a bad character. Uh, she's like a, a lot of these character, a lot of these like ranged mages, but just worse. She's probably a worse version of, uh, Annie, to be honest. Lucian's fucking terrible. Uh, it's somewhere between here. Hmm. I would say it's here. Uh, Lucian's super gankable uh, as an 80 carry top. All 80 carry tops do have the weakness of the fact that if your jungler ganks them, they die 100 times over. Um, that being said, he's never going to allow you to get on him. Even when you hit a Q, if you hit a Q, he's going to first of all Q away, uh, dash away from it. But when you hit a Q, you have to get in range, auto him three times, eat him, and drag him backwards, of which then he probably has dash up again. Uh, and if you, do, if you Q him and he dashes away, he'll have gale force, and then by the time that you actually get to him, he'll have E back up. So there's just no way to ever get on Lucian. That being said, uh, he's super... I don't know. It might actually go here. Fuck. 
Yeah, I'm going to put it there. Uh, you just don't have kill pressure. Your only way of winning this lane, which I don't think is fair to call it a Tom Kench matchup chart, is your jungler camping him. He is a super exploitable character, especially in a long lane like top, because he will be pushed in on you. Um, but yeah, you in a solo lane have no chance against him. He will fall off. Um, in the fact that he, he should just get crushed, and he should get crushed mid-game, and AD carries are a weak roll overall, um, and you're a low econ top laner, so even if he like does get 30 CS on you, you can build more economically viable items, like tank items, and get more value out of them than AD carry items. So that's kind of your way back in the game. It's just matchup-wise, it's so hard to win. Um, Lulu probably goes between, probably here, it's just there's just no way you never kill her it's worse than probably most mages in the top lane uh she's very karma-esque in her way of uh playing uh but maybe worse they're very similar polymorphs just as annoying as like uh empowered tether uh malphite is only slightly tom favored um it's between slightly and i'll put it here uh the main problem with malphite is that he has uh a q which gives him movement speed so that gets him away from you his E is an attack speed slow, which allows you not to hit procs attacks, and his ultimate is a get out of jail free card. Those three things, in theory, should mean he never dies to you. Uh, that being said, I feel like most people who play Malphite are just bad at the game. Um, and I have solo killed enough of them that I think it's probably an easy matchup. He just becomes a menace. Uh, he is a character that you should just solo kill 1 through 6, like, non-stop. Uh, or at least get, like, a 30 plus CS lead by pushing him in a lane, pushing him under tower. Uh, kidding with Q's under tower. Uh, it just can be become a nightmare. Uh, that's something that I might move down later. I'll think about it. Uh, Malzar kind of goes in this same category. It just really doesn't do enough. You will get ganked a lot versus the Malzar lane. He his, He's really only playing this character to ult you, and he can't do that unless, unless an ally is there. Uh, Maokai is like in the same Kench, uh, same Kench, in the same tier as uh, Malphite, but he's probably easier. He probably like goes more like up here. He doesn't really have anything. Uh, the only thing you have to watch for is him dodging your abilities with his um, root. But once again, even if he roots onto you, he's in melee range now. And you're definitely in the uh, driver's seat when you're melee versus him. Uh, Mordekaiser is in this category, I think. There's a world in which I could put him here. Um, and it is a matchup that you can win. Uh, this is the first matchup in the game that I think you have to take Ignite into. Because your trades 1 through 5 are very, very close. But if you fuck them up, he has enough resources with his shield um, that you lose them. The main thing you have to do, and I can never do this, is you have to dodge isolated Qs. Mordekaiser's Q, when it only hits you, does 20% more damage, and that is a lot more damage. If you get hit by isolated Qs, you will lose the trades. This is with any top laner you play, but with Tom Kench, the matchup is so close that if you get hit by those, you lose for sure. Uh, just taking Knight into this lane... Uh, win it hard early, or else he's probably going to trash you. Late game, it gets worse. It only gets worse because he gets to build, like, uh, Omni Vamp items, and he becomes, like, kind of an unkillable tank. So, uh, I, I really think I'm going to put him... I don't know, he's either at the... He's probably at the top of here. He's probably not as bad as those two. It's weird. I would rather play it to Lucian than Mordekaiser, but I think Lucian's a worse matchup, if that makes sense. Uh, I think Lily is a bad top laner right now. She's quick, so that's like her only advantage, but there's not really much you can do about it. I could probably put her in this category. I think that's probably fair, but I probably, if, if I had to put her in this place, I'd put her there. Um, Nasus is like probably the freest lane in the game. Probably more free than uh, Mundo. Uh, his only like advantage is the fact that he uh, uses Wither on you and it's attack speed and movement speed slow. Um, but other than that, you just play very aggressive in the lane. When he goes for Q stacks, you Q onto him and walk behind him and make sure that you're body blocking him as far in as you can. If you get those three stacks, you eat him while his wither is going off on you. Keep him in your mouth as long as you can while he has wither on you, and then spit him out. Uh, you're just trying to like wait out wither, uh, especially near the end of the wither. If you can eat him while wither is like at its like uh, final little part where it's like a 99% slow. Uh, you'll win this matchup super free. You can easily kill this guy like 15 times in lane without trying. Um, Lilia. So I don't. I think Lily I will have to put here. It's only because I don't know if she's good uh, as an on-hit mage anymore. If she's not a good on-hit like top laner anymore, she is um, bad. She's, she's up here. She's terrible. Maybe here because she's unkillable, but she should be here. 
um, if Lily is still being played on hit, um, I don't know if anyone in chat knows if she's still in on hit, on hit, uh, Nico, fuck, uh, Nico, <laughs> this is Nico, uh, <laughs> the on hit character, Lily is the sleepy girl who I put down here, um, anyways, do you guys know if, uh, Lily is played on hit still? Because, uh, if Nico still is being played on hit, she probably goes, like, here, because she's unkillable and she gets free trades, um, but if it's bad, then she probably goes into this category. I think she still is played on hit, so I want to put her here. But I don't think I know enough, so I'm going to put her here. Just if she's on if she's on hit, she goes enemy favorite. If she's not on hit, she's uh, Tom Kent's favorite for sure. Yeah. Um, Olaf. Olaf is a uh, fucked lane. Um, okay, so, but like, is it good anymore? That's like my main thing in this current with the new items is my uh, thing that I'm confused about. Um, anyways, though. I'm just going to move this up. I don't want to do that. Shit. I'm going to break it. I'm going to break everything. Cool. Anyways, uh, next we have Olaf. Olaf is annoying in the fact that he can break your CC. He heals when he's low HP, uh, and he does true damage. All those things kind of trash you in lane. Uh, if you fight him level 1, you will win because he's going to start Q. Uh, and you can beat him even if he Q-spams you. Uh, it just gets a little bit scary when he starts getting the healing, and then once he gets the ultimate, uh, he can kind of just run through you. If you're out of, ever out of position versus a top Olaf, he will kill you. Never be on the Olaf side of the lane when you're playing versus top Olaf. They know their damage way more than you do, and he will run you down. And there's nothing you can do because he just ignores CC. Um, Orn. Orn used to be a Tom favored matchup for sure, uh, the more I've played against it, I'm going to put it even. Uh, he just gets to build items in lane, which feels really, really bad. He gets to um, uh, out-trade you. Like, your trade patterns are good. Yeah, you auto-auto-auto-eat him. But he gets to breathe on you and just auto you and run away. Like, that alone is, like, enough peel that you can't kill a tank. Tanks without peel are, like, your freeze lanes in the game. The Nasus's, Mundo's, Maokai's of the world. Garen, as an example. Uh, Orn is a tank with peel and it really shows he also is a character that will skill into late game i think orin is bad right now that being said he still is a character that when you do hit the upper levels 13 14 15 16 17 you start building your team a thousand gold worth of stats per pop so uh even if you like win this lane he's still late game gonna be up five thousand gold on you so you need to somehow make up that five thousand gold uh deficit in lane, which I don't think is possible as Tom Kench. You need to play way more aggressive characters uh, that can like push their lead uh, to actually do that. Like play Darius versus him, kill him five times as Darius for sure to push that lead. Um, Pantheon, I'm gonna put him here. I've heard that Pantheon tops gross right now. Uh, I don't think the matchup is typically bad for Tom Kench. Like I would lean towards putting it probably here, Tom favored. But I've heard that to uh, top Pantheon's insane right now. So uh, I don't want to like lead anyone astray. I just think that uh, it's annoying because he can block damage. He can block your Q damage. Uh, you still can apply stacks while he is in his, um, while he's in his uh, like shield thingy. You can apply stacks even though you don't do damage with the autos. So that is a benefit. Um, but I don't think it's enough to like push it to like a hard favorite matchup by any means. So I'll have to we'll have to see how uh, this works. Hopefully I'll play against one and I can maybe like update this at some point. Some uh, some point. Uh, Poppy's Tom favored. She doesn't block. She doesn't uh, ground him with any of his abilities. Uh, she doesn't kill him ever. Um, she has no real disengage. Her disengage is disengaging third minions or ulting you away. If she does ult you away, you can time your eat to bring you her with you, and that's a free kill because she'll knock you to your side of the map. Uh, I've done that plenty of times. You make sure you get three stacks on her, and as soon as she starts charging up her ultimate, you eat her right as she lets go. It's very very strong, uh, and it's like makes for some of the funniest clips in the game. Um, Quinn's fucking terrible. Fuck Quinn players. Quinn players should not play League of Legends. They just play a solo game and beat you up and then go farm the map. Uh, she's worse than Lucian, probably. Uh, you don't win. She has items that are super gold efficient. You have to rush uh, Steel Plates into Bramble before you can even finish your Mythic. And the lane's still bad. Because you have to hit a Q on her. Uh, she's going to have Flash and uh, Vault. So you have to get through both of those to have a chance to actually get on her. And she can still out-trade you. And her poke during the entire lane will be infuri infuriating. So uh, 
figure it out. Uh, I just rec would recommend dodging uh, rather than playing versus Quinn. Uh, Renekton's free. Renekton's a fucking free lane. Uh, I, I would like to put it here, but I do think if you're inexperienced in like Renekton's damage, this lane can be a little bit volatile, but it is near the top of uh, uh, Tom Favored. Like, if I had to put a tier in between here, he'd be at the top of it, for sure. Uh, you out-damage him at L points. You do have to watch out for his big heals. When you get Score Drinker plus Empowered Q, it can be spooky. You have to make sure that you don't shield when he has Empowered um, W, because his Empowered W will shred your shield. So if you pop a, pop a 2,000 health shield, his W will just break it immediately and then do the damage to you. So you need to make sure that your shield timing is good. Make sure that you're not standing so he gets big Q heals. Make sure you're not standing so he gets big uh, Gore Drinker heals. But overall, this lane is pretty easy. You just walk up and fight him like every other Tom Kench lane in the game. Yeah, uh, Renekton's W is a shield break ability. They added it last season. Uh, it breaks shields. That's why the Renekton set, uh, set matchup is like pretty good because set hits a huge shield. Renekton can dash through him and then uh, shred his armor and shred that entire shield. It's really, really favored. Uh, I think Rengar is uh, one of the worst matchups in the game for Tom Kench. Not only... So I've only played against Rengar mains, which I guess is like a little bit biased, but the only people who play Rengar top are Rengar mains. And this character gets to jump out of the bush constantly, get free trades on you as a melee character. Melee characters typically, you, when they try to trade with you, you just beat them up. You can't beat up uh, Rengar because he just jumps in and out of bushes really quick. And once he stacks Ferocity, you can't eat him and you can't, can't Q him. Because when you eat him, he uh, cleanses out of it and heals. Uh, and then by the t time you get three stacks again, he has it uh, up again. So there's no way to use your abilities on him efficiently uh, to kill him. Uh, he just heals too much. He has too much mobility. He does too much damage. He's way too slippery of a character. Uh, you, he probably will kill you a couple t a couple times in the lane if he's really, really good. Um, I don't think Rengar Top's good. I just think it abuses Tom Kench's strengths uh, and weaknesses really, really well. Uh, Riven, I haven't played in a long time. It used to be a really free matchup. Uh, I'm assuming it hasn't changed much. Riven slight, got a slight buff in this last patch, but I still think that she's just a character that you out trade much harder than she out trades uh usually when you play this matchup in the old days she just kind of trades in with her triple q into stun and then dashes out uh so you can't get a trade back in and she just gets a free trade but that being said if she ever like messes up you just get to f kill her overall over and over uh she doesn't have much kill pressure in this lane you just build full armor and she shouldn't be able to kill you ever it's pretty straightforward uh rumble is definitely enemy favored I almost want to put it in this category, but you can kill him a bunch. It's more the fact that Tom Kench doesn't deal well with mage, like magic damage. You like building armor. You like building uh, Randuins. You like building uh, Dead Man's Plate. You like building Sunfire. You like building yada, yada, yada. And building MR early feels bad because all your items that you want to build have armor components, with the exception of Sunfire obviously having a null magic mantle. So having to build an early cowl or something to negate some of rumble's damage or building early merc treads for a character that doesn't have like hard cc feels really really bad he gets to win like levels one through three where typically tom kench kind of excels uh honestly this is a lane where tom kench does better the later the lane goes uh but i i don't think that he i don't think missing out on that one to three power spike ever makes up for itself later in the game so that's why i put him here uh, rise fuck rise players he's just like so think of annie and think of lissandra i think i put here yeah annie lissandra uh malzahar he's like the best version of those three he is a pretty mobile spellcaster he runs phase rush every single game so you never are able to get on him uh and he will scale and out uh uh team fight you there's really not much to say about it. Uh, just care for Rise matchups. You won't win them. He has enough CC and movement speed with Phase Rush uh, to never die to you. Phase Rush is probably your biggest weakness as Tom Kench. Like, uh, characters that run Phase Rush will usually beat you up. We'll get to that when we get to Swain, though, because I think Swain is the up next uh, character we'll see in this category. Um, Set. Set's actually not that bad at all. Uh, you just have to watch out for his, uh, his uh, big shield thing. He he's an annoying character. He has a lot of health regen. He tanks a lot of damage. But if you're able to um, dodge his W, don't get chained E into W. Uh, so don't trade first. Make sure he trades. Honestly, you want him to initiate the trade. If he initiates the trade with E, you can probably win it. If you have to initiate the trade, you're probably going to eat a W. And if you eat a W, that means you can't E his shield. Because his E into uh, W is not uh, 
it, it's a combo, so you can't E out of it. So you're going to take a lot of damage. But overall, I think you should be able to win this matchup most of the time. You just have to watch out for his health regen in the fights because when they do get close, his health regen is insane the lower HP he is. Um, top of Shaco. Uh, so I'm only including this one because I've played against... Uh, fuck, what's that guy's name? Pinkbox? Pinkbox? Why am I blanking on his name? The uh, Shaco top laner player. Pinkbox? Shaco? It's something box, right? Uh, Pink Word. Pink Word. There we go. Pink Word, the AP Shaco player. I've played against him a couple times, uh, mainly when he's smurfing. He is the best AP Shaco player in the world. I'm not sure if he still plays him top lane. He used to when he streamed a bunch. Uh, but this matchup is actually fucking impossible. The good thing is AP Shaco does fucking nothing. He's a little bit better in the current meta because uh, Everfrost is actually a good item on him. But old AP Shaco did fucking nothing out of the lane. That being said, you can never kill him and he will kill you with trap combos. Because AP Shaco player is nowhere to put traps and know which ways you're going to run. So you will never be able to escape when you do overtrade. Um, that being said, I wouldn't worry about it. I would honestly probably put it here. Um... Because maybe AP Shaco was changed enough that I don't that it's not worth uh, while talking about. Um, Shen Shen is Tom favored. The only th things you have to watch out for is the fact that Shen has an auto attack block. Shen has uh, an alt that will match your ultimate, but better by like a lot. Um, and he has a taunt that if you do over trade, you will get uh, beaten up for it. Shen does a lot of damage. You do have to realize when to trade and when to use your shield. And when to back off, because uh, if you get ganked, you will die to a Shen. But overall, just don't trade into his blocked autos. Try to bait it out. Try to look like you're going aggressive and make him pop it, and then go back in on him right after it expires. Uh, also, uh, as a Shen player, I played a lot of Shen last season. Make sure that he doesn't pull his sword through you. If he pulls his sword through you and gets the empowered autos, you will go even in that trade at best, uh, if not losing the trade. If he doesn't get to pull his sword through you, um, then you're going to win that trade pretty easy. His damage is pretty low without the empowered autos uh, and attack speed. Um, singed. Fuck Singed. Uh, I, that's that's really all I have to say. Uh, it's not that he like crushes you in lane. It's more the fact that you don't get to lane versus him. And we all have, like, hopefully I've explained it enough. Tom Kench is good in these lanes because you fight people and you kill them. If Singe just runs past you and proxy farms down the side of your lane... You don't get to fight him, and that is a huge advantage to this character. There's really not much to say. If he proxies you, he's here. If he doesn't proxy you, he's here. But most sin just proxy, so you have to watch out. Um, Scion, I'm starting to like... So Scion used to be here. I still think it can be here, but it's probably here right now. Uh, you do just beat him at all points in the game. Like He, he, he never is a better character than you, I think. That being said, he is much easier to play. Not to say that Tom Kenches is a fucking character for savants like me or anything. Um, but he's just brain dead. You get out of any bad trade he gets to alt out of. He gets a flash alt out of. He gets to shield out of. He gets to walk into a bush and fucking slam his big fucking uh, axe down. If he dies in fights, he's still a menace character. Um, during lane, you just trade him. You trade him at any minute. Uh, if he shoots his E through you, he will Q you. If he Qs you or slows you, he gets away from the trade. His Q is a two second stun slash knockup, so he gets to pretty easily walk away from you. Uh, that being said, he doesn't really have any kill pressure unless he gets a gank, uh, so you shouldn't worry too much. Uh, I, I really do want to put him here, but I've had, I, I, think that's where, I think that's where he should go. I think I've just had frustrations with him um, getting out of trades very uh, uh, closely because of uh, bullshit with his ultimate and stuff. So, uh, he's probably the hardest of the easy matchups, though. Um, Swain is impossible. Uh, if I actually had to rank these, I'd probably go Rengar, Rengar Darius. Swain's probably actually pretty low. So, Swain doesn't have kill pressure in lane. He doesn't have kill pressure in lane, but he is a phase rush user, and he will scale better than you. He will become a better character than you. Um, when you do heat, eat him when he's in his ultimate, he still heals. He is a character that will heal during your ultimate. Renekton does damage to you when he's in his ultimate inside of your belly. Uh, so does Nasus. Um, all those characters' effects still apply. The biggest one, though, is Swain. Because Swain heals a fucked amount. And you can uh, bring him back to your allies and fuck them up with him as well. Uh, in lane, you have zero kill pressure. Even if what you get on him, he will phase rush away. He will stun you. He will do bullshit Swain things. I think Swain is underrated currently in the meta. Uh, I don't think you should play him top that often. I think he's much better suited for mid or maybe even bottom. Definitely support. 
Um, but uh, there's just no way to win this lane. I've only played it twice, I think, but both times have just been miserable. I think I would have rather laned versus Darius. Um, where did I put Olavi on this list? Dar Dar I I'm going to put Olavi there, probably. Uh, I'm going to put, uh, I'm going to say Darius. Um, I'd much rather lane versus a lot of these characters over um, Swain, though. He's just very frustrating. Um, Silas. Silas is super free. Uh, you have to watch out for his healing late game, but he doesn't scale into that healing early enough. He will steal your ultimate and try to, like, go for plays, but no Silas player fucking knows Tom Kench's ult ranges, so it's not going to be very useful until, like, super late game. So I wouldn't worry about that. It's just pretty free. You just fight him all game. Uh, he can't do much against you. Uh, Teemo is once again favored. It's like he has the annoyance of being a ranged character. He has the annoyance of having a blind. But Teemo's one of the worst characters, I think, in League right now. So there's not much he can do to you. Um, just fight him. If you don't fight him, who cares? He's not going to scale and do anything anyways. Uh, he's a bad character. Um, Trundle is also like your favorite for you. Uh, the only thing you have to watch out for the tr in the Trundle lane is that Trundle steals your stats. So the further ahead you are, the more armor and magic resist you have, the tank your Trundle will be. If Trundle does steal your stats, uh, similar to a lot of these matchups where like characters have effects like Nasus Wither, Alawi Ultimate, stuff that persists, um, eat him, eat him, and keep him in your belly. Because the longer he's in your belly, the longer he's wasting his ultimate. If you can keep characters out of their power moves that like last a couple seconds, uh, you're in a really, really good spot. You can do that with Fiora as well. I should have talk, talk, touched on that. But um, she probably will parry you if you try that. Whereas Trundle, you can just easily eat him. With Nasus, you can easily eat him, etc. And that's kind of like with the Swain thing as well. Swain's power move is his ultimate. Um, but he gets his healing still. He doesn't get to freely move around, but he gets to do damage to you and heal. So it doesn't really matter. Um, Trindamir is fucking free. It might be one of the easiest matchups in the game. It's probably like Kirish, I would assume. Uh, he doesn't do anything. You can just kill him at any point during the lane. You build armor, build your Sunfire, you build your Tabbies, build your Bramble Vest. Uh, when he ults, eat him so he doesn't do damage and you get to like run around and do free shit. Uh, it's free. Just, just play it smart. There's no way you can lose that lane. Uh, Uder tops. F I don't even think it's worth talking about. I'm gonna put Uder back in here. I don't think it's worth talking about. Um, Urgot. Urgot's pretty free. Uh, Nick's played this matchup a couple times. He asked me if it was pretty free. I remember it being a little bit harder, but uh, I don't think it's that bad by any means. Uh, I think I just have a mental block versus Urgot. Um, but even when I used to play versus Urgot as Tom Kanchi, it was still a very free matchup. I probably don't have enough information to talk about it, but uh, I feel comfortable enough off of my matchup knowledge from the past and Nick's current matchup knowledge that Urgot is a slightly favored lane. Just watch out when he does get items like, uh, does he even build current Death Stance? I'm assuming like he still builds items like Death Stance into uh, Armor Shred items. Those like are deadly combos and make him a kind of unkillable tank. So just watch out for that. Uh, Vladimir is fucking cancer. I don't think he's as bad as, uh, like, he's probably, like, slightly worse than Ryze, but he has, like, the strength of the Ryze being, like, this super, like, mobile healing mage, whatever. Um, but, yeah, the healing is, like, almost unbeatable. The main problem is that you can never beat Vladimir hard enough, because he's a ranged character, that he won't scale into late game and just wipe your team. Even in fights, like, a lot of these characters, like, you have this advantage of, oh, if they're going to go off my team, I'll just eat them, and I will make sure that they don't wipe my team. Vladimir, on the other hand, you get two autos on him, and then he goes into pool, and then he just wipes your team anyways. There's no way you get to eat this guy and stop him from wiping your team, and that's why he's so strong. Uh, I haven't played against uh, Volibear. I'm assuming it is Tom Kench favored, but Volibear has a surprising amount of damage. This could easily fall into the more even category, but there's no way it goes into enemy favored. I just don't, I don't think Volibear is like a tactful enough character to be able to just brute force his way through uh tom gench uh top so i only included warwick because i used to play when i played tom kench the first time i got high elo with him i was d2 playing him and i played against hashinshin i think two or three games when hashinshin was a top warwick only player uh that for that month or whatever and Fuck, that matchup sucks warwick's healing when he is low hp is almost impossible to deal with that being said, you crush him until he gets low HP. Like, you feel like you're winning the lane 85% of the time, and then when he gets low, he kind of just beats your ass up. Uh, I do think this is Tom Kench's favorite. I think Warwick Top's just bad. Like, I don't think anyone plays it now. I don't even think I should include it on this list, but I think it's worth mentioning that it used to be a thing. 
I could still be see it, uh, people playing it as a thing. Um, but just watch out for the healing. Build early Grievous Wounds and you'll be fine. Okay, we're on our last couple. Um, Wukong. Wukong's a free lane. Not much to say there. Watch out for stealth. If you apply stacks, uh, the stacks will go on his... Uh, not won't go on his clone unless they've changed it, uh, but they'll only go on him, so you can pretty easily see when he clones. So watch for that. Uh, but other than that, it's like pretty free. He doesn't do enough damage to ever kill you. Uh, Vayne is fucking cancer. She goes in the same category as these three. She might be... If I had to rank these three, it's probably... It's probably that. Uh, Quinn into uh, Vayne into Lucian. Quinn has too much getaway. Vayne has a lot of getaway but more damage or not as much getaway but more damage and Lucian is annoying but like beatable I think uh as for these top lane uh Yasuo is like definitely Tom favored uh you just fight him he does have a surprising amount of damage level one but uh it's pretty easy to beat him but just watch out he can win while your Qs if he win your Qs you can get fucked up a little bit but just brute force your way through with autoing if he like uh places a good uh win wall and starts going through it don't waste your time trying to time your queue through the wind wall um yon is like yasuo but like easier uh nick thinks his matchups like here but i think it's here i just think yon players are very are varied in their like skill level you can play against a yon player that will probably sauce you uh sauce you and you can probably play against a yon player who you can just like 20 own lane he's like very similar to the yasuo in the fact that there are a lot of people who are just bad at the character who play him because he's fun uh he is better than yasuo in the fact that he can play safe if he wants to. Yasuo can't play the lane safe. Yasuo does have to get up there. Yon can just use E and farm and then make some like easy trades with you if he really wants and then just wait for his um, E cooldown. But y Yasuo doesn't have the same luxuries. Um, York. Uh, York is probably Tom favored just because York's bad right now. Uh, when York used to be good at the game, it was like pretty even. You just had to watch out for like the amount this uh, Mist Ma Mist Maiden does. You can eat the Maiden if I remember correctly, but you can't really out dps it so there's no reason to eat it and spit it somewhere like a lot of the time i will eat daisy from ivern and spit her out places um but i don't think it's worth it eating york's maiden if you can i don't remember if you can though uh it just just watch out for his maiden damage other than that it's a very free lane just fight him uh his wall thing that he creates is very annoying so try to position yourself outside of it try not to get caught in it but other than that you shouldn't have any issues um zack top has always been free uh, he has a lot of healing. When he does get a couple items, he becomes kind of unkillable, but he will never be a better character than you, I think, through at any point in the game. And last is Viego. I think Viego's, uh, slight, uh, it's probably even. I think my main issues that I had with Viego is I didn't understand his kit. He will be a character that will be nerfed in upcoming patches, without a doubt. Um, he abuses Blade of the Ring King too well. Obviously, should he should abuse Blade of the Ring King. That is kind of his weapon in lore. Um, but the fact that you can get three 12% autos off in like a second is kind of gross, I think, currently. Uh, and his stun's pretty easy to land. And his ultimate is probably one of the better ultimates in the game. Um, but honestly, you can just fight him one through five and beat him up a bunch. At six, you do have to watch out. In 2v2s, he can gain a surprising amount of health diving people or killing people. Yeah, he still keeps Tower Aggro when he ults someone, but he gets enough health that it might as well drop tower aggro so just watch out for the amount of health that he gains uh during stuff like that uh he is surprisingly strong uh the other ones i briefly want to talk about i don't think i'm actually going to place these guys is cassiopeia she kind of falls into the same range as like these uh phase rush uh top laners um but she's like definitely less played honestly i'll place her like probably there-ish um graves graves I've, I've played against two but i don't think i should have played against any i think graves is less popular than a lot of characters on this list um but he's bad he is a shitty version of these guys uh that puts himself kind of like here-ish i would assume uh you just kind of fight him all lane he doesn't have enough damage or enough peel to uh get out of your stuff he has to ult himself away if you get on him and that's never good um diana's bad diana is like a bad top laner uh, she's good mid, but she doesn't have enough burst. Burst damage isn't as good against tanks as it is against assassins and bottom laners. She likes to run bottom so she can get easy kills. You can't beat up a tank and do the same things to a tank that you can't do an assassin or an AD carrier or support. Uh, Master E, this might be the, like one of the freeze lanes in the game, but I think it looks stupid me putting this on my list here. Um, so I'm just not going to put it there because I think that's just not worth talking about. Um, and then Nocturne, uh, the only reason I had a Nocturne is uh, I had a user in my chat yesterday who played against Top Nocturne, uh, and there are stuff that you want to mention about it, because 
Top Nocturne is very free. It might be as easy as like a Master Yi type lane. These characters are very similar. They just auto attack you, get empowered, auto attacks, yada yada yada. All that you have to do to beat Nocturne is don't, um, don't eat his spell shield. If you eat his spell shield or even Q his spell shield, he gets a huge attack speed steroid that will allow him to trade back at least even with you. I still think you can win trades if you fuck up into that, um, but his spell shield is only like a one and a half second spell shield. It's very short. Uh, I think it's one and a half seconds. Uh, I'll look it up quickly. Nocturne. Lol. Uh, I think it's one and a half seconds though. Uh, so it's a spell shield that you can easily just auto. Yeah, it's 1.5 seconds. Um, so you can just like not Q or use an ability for 1.5 seconds and just continue to auto him and then fight him. If you can like easily wait that out, you will have zero issues in this lane. It should never be a problem. Um, so let me just delete that. Cool. Cool. Uh, so this is my uh, finalized list. These characters... Uh, are kind of varied in skill range. Uh, obviously, characters like these you try to want to avoid. You maybe even want to dodge if you see these characters. I've been going back to banning Darius every game. I think this matchup is just too volatile to ever win. These characters you'll just have never fun. You'll have zero fun playing against. But for the most part, you have a pretty widespread uh, positive matchup range playing this character. Even though if I was to make a top lane tier list, I would put Tom Kenshin B plus at best, maybe A minus. Uh, I think he has favorable matchups versus most of the cast uh, due to his innate strength of 1v1ing people early game. Uh, so hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. I probably will turn this into a YouTube video, so if it does go online, hopefully it looks pretty good. Um, anyways, that was a lot of fun. Thanks.